What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to my story. So we're a few days out from the cup game that I mentioned we'd come back for, but a little bit of news on the job front. Today we have been offered an international job with Cook Islands. They are 189th ranked in the world, they are half star reputation team, so it's nothing exactly to get too excited about, don't get me wrong. But it's the first job in international management, the first senior job, and we will be taking it, we'll be, I'll be going ahead with it accepting the offer and there we go i will leave my under 23 role with a somewhat decent record i'll be honest you know what do we do we lost two three games in charge of them and obviously the big one itself in the olympic qualifiers final but we put in a fantastic display we were unlucky to miss out there obviously that last minute chance if we'd have taken that we'd have gone at least through to extra time who knows what would have happened from there so there was potential there but it's time to move on. We move to another Oceana club. We move to Cook Islands. I don't actually think we have a competition with them coming up for a little while yet. Uh, let me have a look. We've got a friendly against Tahiti coming up on the 13th of June. So that's actually... is The squad must have already been announced for that. So, yeah, we have to have a friendly straight after the cup game. Which, um, do I want to do that on camera? No, we won't do that on camera, no, no. But yeah, so for Cook Islands, uh, like I said, I don't think we've got anything, any competitions coming up. Then we were part of the Oceana Nations Cup. We were knocked out. As a result of us getting knocked out, we actually failed to qualify for the... Uh, let me go to the rules. We failed to qualify for the uh, Olympic qualifiers. So if we'd have, we were in the first round, then you have to progress through to the second round. The second round progressed for the semi-final, which are Olympic... Um, which I think... Yeah, no, sorry, yeah. So it goes to a semi-final, all that, etc. So blah, blah, blah. It all moves on. Uh, so you can, someone wins this, obviously. So that's New Zealand, for Haiti, uh, Fiji are hosting it. But if you get to the second round and you finish in the top three in the second round, you end up winning a World Cup qualification spot. So obviously we didn't make it past the first round. These three teams all made it through. So I, I don't know when our next competition will be for Cook Islands. I don't know if we'll ever even take them to a competition. Obviously we've got, uh, got a little while to wait and I'll still be looking for our international jobs, seeing what's out there and stuff. But it's the first step on international management on a proper schedule. Obviously, we've not got fantastic players. Here's one of our best ones playing for Otaka University in New Zealand and a few others. We've got so apparently some decent players compared to the rest of this nation, but I doubt they're up to... They're not fantastic. I can see for a fact right now. They're not great players. But hey, I say it's a little bit of a little bit of history. It's now technically our third job in management. As you can see, Galing International, Fiji on the 23s, and Cook Island. So yeah, I'm going to cut now. We'll meet you back for the, uh, the Galing International game in the Cup. All right, guys. So it's the Cup game. And we've got Buyang Kets. I'm not too sure um, why this. Well, why we've got this team. Let me explain very briefly. So this this team are actually from Cambodia. And uh, Ceres are from the Philippines. So I'm not too sure why they're playing. And I think Visakat also Cambodian. So I'm not too sure why we've got... Two other nations playing in the Singapore Cup. Now, I'm not too familiar with the geographical locations of Asia too much. I know Philippines is just a small load of islands. Was it like 160-something islands or something stupid like that? Uh, Cambodia, I'm not too familiar with. Singapore, I know it's not a massive country. So maybe it's just the fact that they're so small countries, they've decided to put them all into one cup competition. I'm not too sure. But either way, we've got a team that we're not familiar with, we don't play against. And I think are one of the best teams in Cambodia. They are the highest reputation anyway so i'm like a 15.2.95 million how many people are in singapore i think it really does make a difference but yeah so i'm not too familiar with this team we've not come up against them previously so i've not really got any basis to go off of we are playing in a pretty big stadium is this yes it must be the team well all the cambodian teams playing it so yeah there must be a big indication that cambodia just has one sort of stadium one league one it's very small football isn't probably the biggest thing there so it'll be interesting to see how we go the um, Actually, sorry, before we go into the game, I should mention how we've done in our fixtures. So, yeah, I last left you off. We had drawn 3-3 with Negat Unicorns. Belstia, we'd won 1-0 against in our next game. And we finally ended our run of 11 games without a win, I think it was, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, we finally picked up a victory. That was fantastic news for us. Keeper played fantastically well, which is a stark contrast to what I was saying in the previous game. He put in a fantastic performance. Aslan as well, uh, left back, played really well. And Saberian up front, scoring the only goal of the game in the 63rd minute, providing us with a winner. So, it was good to see that. 
first win in a long time and we really did need it. In fact, you can see as well from that draw onwards, we've done pretty well in the league. We're still in eighth, but we've done a lot better than we had previously. A DPMM followed. This was a team that were bottom of the table or near the bottom of the table with us. So it was, again, I really wanted to win. The keeper put in the blinding game. We missed quite a few chances. We had a, a few decent opportunities here and there. If Fran didn't play particularly well, Asaraf, our defensive midfielder, played well. I think... Uh, Maldonado was suspended from this game due to picking up too many yellow cards. So it's a disappointing game to draw 0-0. I would like to have done better there. Home United followed up next, and we always know we can get a good result against Home United if we at least put in an average performance. And it was pretty average. We won one in again. Saberin with the only goal of the game. Uh, pretty even match on the match stats. But Ifran, Saberin, midfielder like Maldonado, all putting in good performances, helping contribute to another victory for us in two in three games. We then lost our unbeaten streak. We had a four-game unbeaten streak going, which is, again, a nice contrast. We lost 2-0 to Tampines. Uh, poor game. Own goal from Aslan in the 44th minute. We didn't really look like we ever got going. It's even the average ratings. It was just a below average performance. Even the match bats and stuff. We we just weren't good. They were better than us. And at the end of the day, I think the better team just won. I think that was the end of for this game. Never really got. I said never really looked looked like winning. And our most recent game, we drew nil nil with Warriors. Again, another game where, despite the fact we looked decent, we had a lot of possession. We struggled to convert the opportunities into good opportunities. We struggled to convert our opportunities into shots on targets. And as a result, we we drew 0-0. Saberian had a really bad performance. So did most of our attacking midfielders and centre midfielders. Uh, so yeah, we want to move on from that. I think this is a good opportunity to do that. We've had a big break between the games. It's been about 20 games since we played the Warriors match. So we've got a bit more familiar with the tactic, uh, which we've changed up a little bit again, which I'll talk about now. And yeah, I think we, I'm hoping we can get a good performance. So yeah, we're playing a, it says park the bus formation, ignore that. I've changed a lot of things up. So we're playing a 4-3-3. Three, three. We're, I really want to utilize Maldonado in his best position. That means we want to play a deep lying player, make a defend in defensive midfield. But apart from that, I've left things pretty open. We've decided to keep it very basic at the back. I've actually changed the, the fact, despite the fact Anua and also uh, Abdil, I can't pronounce his second name, Kayim, maybe something like that, Kalayim. Uh, yes, but he's he's coming into the team actually. This is the first time I think you'll see him play. He's returned from injury, but yeah, I, I just want to simplify things at the back for them. So I've put them as no nonsense centre backs, whatever it's called. Uh, full backs on automatic again. Deep line playmaker Maldonado, obviously. Midfielders, centre midfields, attack, centre midfield support. We've got Fernandez, a 16 year old, coming into the team today. Uh, he thinks he's got a bright future ahead of him, so hopefully he'll put in a good, decent performance. Right attack midfield, we've got Van Hoosen, who's looked fairly average for us, but probably better than most on that right attack midfield side. He's probably the best of the bad bunch. Uh, on the left-hand side, we've got Jordan Clark starting today, but the left-hand side has been an issue for us. You can see I've got inverted winger on. He's not actually going to play that uh, because I was considering playing Aob in that position, but I decided against it. And up front, we've got Saberian as a poacher. Continuing to go with him. He's our top goal scorer this season with three goals, but not not really much ahead. The uh, reason I'm on this screen is because we need to put a few people on the bench because um, I think these lads are with the international teams. Yep, they're with the under-19s. Uh, so our left-back needs to leave the pitch. And we will put Yusuf. So yeah, that's this is the team going into the game. Uh, it's probably one of our strongish tie ish like strong ish ish strongish strongest ish sides. Like we can make a few changes here and there, but make it a little bit stronger. Or you know, depends who depends who wants to play on their day basically. But I've got one transfer coming in as well uh, in a few days' time on the fifteenth. So he actually comes in yeah in a couple of days' time before the Young Lions match, and that is Afik. Younes, who's a centre-back, nine caps for the international team. Uh, he looks fairly decent, looks better than anything else we really have, and he will hopefully shore up the defence in the second half of the season. I'll continue to look to improve the side because there are obviously some glaring weaknesses with this team. I'll continue to look for a new left attacking midfielder, whether that is from Singapore himself or not. We'll have to wait and see. And I'll just see what I can get out there in the um, in the transfer market because I do think there are weaknesses that need to be improved in this team. I don't want to finish the season in eighth. As you can see, that's where we currently are. We're not too far off. You know, getting into the top six uh, is still such a close league because there's not too many points that bring us. We're 12 points off second, which obviously is a fair margin, but it's recoverable. It is somewhat recoverable. So let me go into submit those teams and uh, let's go into the game. I'm going to ignore the match sharpness and all that stuff. So fingers crossed we can do well in this competition. What is it? I think it's a preliminary round going into a quarterfinals, going into a semifinal, going into a final. So we've got... Uh, not got to win that many games, actually, to get into a decent opportunity. Sort of like the League Cup, where we didn't win a single game into the semi-final. And then we won in the semi-final, we're into a final. So you can sort of stumble your way through cup competitions. Based on our performances so far this year, it's sort of... It's, it's a stat against us. We're not one of the best teams in this country. 
But I still have hope that in a one-off game, if we turn up, if a few players take their opportunities, we can win games. I mean, we've had a half chance here. We've not seen it on camera, but we've had a half chance. And if we convert that half chance, one nil up. That's the difference we need to make. We need to take every link, single little opportunity we can get, which may be a lot to ask at this level of football because the standard's not great. Applin now with a opportunity to give us the lead. It was a long shot, though, from outside the box, so can't really ask. Can't really put too much pressure on him. <laughs> like, again, the level of football has to, have to take everything with a grain of salt. Now, apparently, as well, this club is a little bit smaller than us. I don't really get it. In terms of reputation, we're about similar. But it was spoke about before the game in the press conference that we'd have to get ourselves up for this match. So, I'm seeing people at Apple in there. It looks uh, complacent. I'm hoping I might need to do a little shout or something in a second because I don't want to see that as Applin hits the bar Clark coming in on the rebound can't convert the opportunity and Maldonado's pass is very poor he's trying to get it back in the danger zone a bit too quickly should have taken his t should have took his time and looked to pick a pass out here is Maldonado we're trying to use him as a creative outlet for the team and uh, let people in front do the rest for him but it's not worked so far to in the way I've wanted it to, anyway, Maldonado's not really had a major standout performance. No, he's got a few sevens and stuff, but I wanted to stand out. I want to see him pick up man of the match a couple of times. He's good enough to do that, but he's just not quite hitting them heights yet. And whether that's the players in front of him for, um, it's hard to say, but it's it's not something I'm not seeing right now. It's a good ball here to Van Husen. Can he find Saberin in the box? He finds Aplin instead, and it is a goal. Aplin's been pushing for that all game. He's been getting in the right positions, coming in late into the box, and we finally take the lead, 1-0. It's been coming. Zero shots from them in the entire match. They've had a fair amount of possession, but they're not doing anything with it. So, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that indeed. One new up at half time. That'll be good if we can bring it back in. Clark and Fernandez not playing well. Ifran struggling a little out there as well. But we shouldn't be too worried about the defensive aspect of the team because it is about going forward. But we've only converted three of our ten shots. It's a less than a third, uh, third or thirty-three percent conversion rate into shots on target. It's again the same issues sort of presenting themselves for the team. Clark is really struggling out there. We're going to take him off. This is kind of the issue that I'm saying. We don't really have a left midfielder that is pulling in these easy performances. Let's put Ayob out there as an inside forward. See what we can do with that. Uh, Saberin still up top. We'll keep him there for now. Not had a click opportunity yet. Mm. Lack of creativity probably in the side once more as we struggle to create. I said that, that that ball through, that killer ball that will create an opportunity for Sparing just to kind of slot it home in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Got to watch out here. There's a little few gaps presenting themselves in our defence. It's a good save from Nagara. They've hit the post as well. Dangerous, dangerous attack from them. I know it doesn't say click opportunity, but it was a good opportunity uh, in, in its right. You know, it, it presented a threat for the keeper that he had to save. Clearance forward. So Baron chases it through. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he just can't kill it the right side of the post. God damn, that was unlucky. Fernandez, we're going to take off. He's not really stepped up today. We're going to put Kazman on, who is someone that has, he actually scored a good goal you know, a few games ago. We'll bring him on again. We kind of need Fernandez to play due to the under-23 rules, but Kazman probably would be the starting player if not. So Berin here needed to wait for other players to get forward before he played that in because he played that to absolutely no one. In fact, this is a ball over the top from them, and it's Nagara with a good save. Since I've, In fact, since that last live com, I will say this to him, about him. He has put in some really good performances. He has saved a few one-on-ones. He's um, he's kind of not... I can, I can comfortably say that he's not been at fault for any of the goals. I've not looked at it and gone, oh, he probably should have saved that. So, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know why why it's turned around all of a sudden for him. But he's looking like a better goalkeeper this past month or so. And for the last substitution, we're going to make an attacking change. We're going to take Saberin off. Who's not looked good today. We're going to bring Sammy in on. And we're actually going to shame to advance forward. I don't really like playing poachers up front by themselves. But my coach was like, oh, you know, you should give it a go. So I have. And I still don't think a poach can play up front by himself. I don't know where where he's getting that from. So I think I might have to change that with the tactic uh, as well. And sort of move away from poach and move more towards advance forward. Maybe even pressing forward. Sammy in here with a good opportunity. He's nicked the ball off the defender. And before I could even finish the sentence, I was on. He'd already took the shot way too early. Take your time or, or look back. Try and look for support. I know we don't offer too much in the way of support, but you've got to look for it at least. I won the game either way. 1-0 in the end. Enough to see us through. I'm really not happy how much we let them back in the game in that second half. Uh, we should be doing a lot better there. But 1-0, we're through to the next round of the Cup. What is it, the first round? Quarterfinals here. Like I said, quarterfinals. Quarterfinals as well against Home United. A team, like I said, we've enjoyed playing uh, since I've been in charge. We have... Oh, I don't know why these are all highlighted uh, since we've been in charge oh these are the games we've been in charge of 
Yeah, so since we've been in charge, we've won 4 1, 3 1, we've lost 2 1, and we won 1 0 most recently. So we have a decent record against them, hoping for a good game. When do we play that? Oh, it's a two legged affair. Jesus, that's not good. Uh, I'll probably meet you back for the end of the League Cup like we did last season. So the final game of the League Cup, uh, we'll, we'll give a little update of how the transfer window went because I think that's near the end of the transfer window or just after the transfer window closes. Give you an update as well with Cook Island. We'd have managed a game by them. And uh, what else? Would we? And yeah, see if we can get through to another quarterfinals or semi-final of the League Cup. Obviously matching what we did last year. Uh, so yeah, this will be it for now, guys. Uh, good news, at least at the end of the episode, we 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 are on a massive, uh, obviously massive, massive L last at the start of this season. We really need to turn it around. We're somewhat in the process of doing that. Obviously, the tactic is still not fantastic, but it's good enough to at least enable us to get a few results and not look absolutely terrible. So yeah, guys, until the League Cup final game of the group, peace out. <laughs>